Hey, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Marvel's Avengers. And in this one, I want to give you a quick guide on how to hit the max gear score, which is 150, as well as a few tips on how to gear efficiently, as well as sort of leveling up quickly in the process. Basically, everything you need to know to kind of get towards the end game for those of you that are trying to get that far in game. So if you guys do enjoy this, then like be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, if you guys are enjoying this game, then make sure you stick around because we have got some more videos coming your way. Now, of course, the initial question will be, why do I want to get to end game? Because admittedly, right now, the end game content is not in game. So getting to 150 gear score, getting to max level, short of just doing it because you want to, there isn't really a massive need to do so right now. In the most recent war table, the one that they showed during the launch window, they did of course say that the Mega Hives and the Secret Labs are dropping very soon after launch. We don't have an exact date window for that just yet, but Mega Hives are basically a weekly mission type that uses all your heroes, and once one of your heroes falls, the next one taps in, and you basically go down descending floors of difficulty to go as far as you can. Meanwhile, the Secret Labs, they've kind of likened it to a raid. I mean, having seen the footage, it looks more akin to that of, say, a dungeon. But either way, you know, terminology aside, point is, it is also a once a week activity designed for a full team of fully geared players. This is designed for people at the upper gear score caps. And basically, as you progress through, depending on your performance, that will influence how the final boss fight plays out. And uh, basically, it's kind of your end game pinnacle activity, the reason that you want to be heavily geared. So, you know, that is the thing to look forward to. And if that sounds interesting, then there is, of course, value in being higher gear score so you can be there. So if you guys want to know about that, then uh, let's jump into it. Of course, if you jump over to your gear screen, you will know that every character, although your items may look different, principally, everybody has four main armor slots, so to speak. And you then have two ISO slots for your minor artifacts. And you then have your major artifact as well. Now, in terms of gear, when you look at your pieces, the individual gear score cap on a base piece will be 130. 130 are the highest gear score items that you can get to drop. And then beyond that point, you then need to boost them. You guys should be familiar with this format, but when you get pieces of gear, you can boost them using materials you find throughout the world. If you have green pieces, they can be boosted three times. If you have blue pieces, they can be boosted five times. Meanwhile, epic and legendary items can be boosted 10 times. So you basically get a 130 base piece and you can boost that up to 10 times to 140. The idea would then be you would have 140 pieces in every single one of your four armor slots. You would then boost your two ISOs up to 140 and you would then have the major artifact, which you then boost up to plus 10. And all of these together would then give you 150. Admittedly, I am sitting right now at 144 because I've been changing some gear pieces around. I basically got some pieces that I actually quite like and I do want to level up. And keep in mind, when you get to end game, it is quite expensive to level up these pieces. They require a lot of pieces. They require a lot of upgrade modules, a lot of just general resources. So uh, yeah, if you decide to swap out a piece, it can be quite an investment to get that up to 140, so I'm kind of working that way back up. But the main thing to note is that if you're trying to get to max gear score, what you want to be doing is you want to be pursuing 130 gear drops so you can then find the item you want and begin leveling up from there. Now, when it comes to actually getting the pieces and grinding the armor pieces, what I would initially recommend is once you complete the campaign, go through the missions that are like these ones here. Things like Stark Realities, the uh, Threat Sectors, or some of the Drop Zone ones. Any of these kind of War Zone missions, these ones that are basically repeatable and they have performance-based rewards. The reason I say this is because you can run these on repeat and you can get a drop every single time and those drops will typically coincide with your current gear score. So you can equip pieces, go through, get a piece that is incrementally better, put it on and then go from there. The reason I suggest doing these over the other missions is because when you look at missions like, say, some of the story missions, some of the shield faction missions, or even some of the later missions, I've actually done most of them now, but there are some missions like these, for example, iconic missions and other ones that will give you guaranteed legendary gear. And keep in mind, these gear drops will scale based on your gear score. So if you do them too early, sure, you'll get some legendary items, but it's going to be dropping considerably lower. So what we basically did was we went through we farmed all those missions back to back, the kind of repeatable ones. And then once we got towards the very end, we then started picking up all the other missions so that when we got the legendary drops, they actually dropped at our current gear score. With that being said, a couple of things to note. If you're not in a rush, and admittedly with the endgame content not actually in-game, you're technically speaking not in a rush, then you can actually save yourself a lot of time by not upgrading the pieces that you get, simply equipping the more powerful pieces 
and then just continually playing and equipping them incrementally that way. By doing this, you're then saving your resources so that when you get towards the end of the game, you can actually spend those items and you haven't wasted a lot of them. However, if you are trying to be more efficient, you're trying to do it at least quicker, shall I say, then you want to be getting pieces, upgrading them as far as you can, so that then boosts your gear score even further, so the next time you get drops, they drop even higher. Either way, the point is, farm those repeatable missions, get your gear drops, and keep climbing that way. In between that, you do of course want to then go over and head to the vendors, because sometimes you'll get unlucky with your drops, sometimes you'll find that you may be missing, I don't know, a belt, and it just will not drop at a higher gear score, and more often than not, if you go to the vendors, you will find that they sell that item. Now, they are pretty expensive at the vendors, so you're not going to be buying items left, right and centre, but sometimes it's enough to just buy the missing piece you want to bring up your gear score base, and then once you've done that, it then raises your whole level, again putting you in a good position. So check your vendors, keep in mind there are two vendors and two faction vendors, they're all good places to go to. The faction vendors often have nice ISOs, sometimes you'll get those triple stat stacked ones, so definitely worth checking. But doing that all together, a combination of repeatable missions, visiting your vendors and upgrading your gear is ultimately how you'll get to your gear score cap. I'm now in a position where whenever I'm farming missions, things are all dropping at 130. So basically, I'm now at the point where by any time things drop, I'm just looking for stats that I like, so I can decide what items I ultimately want to upgrade. Of course, related to this, if you are wondering how you can get to level 50 as fast as possible, keep in mind, for the most part, leveling is pretty organic in this game because gear that you obtain is not level gated, nor are the activities you do. So the main purpose of leveling up is simply to unlock all of your skills. Now, with that in mind, what you should really be doing is focusing on just gearing up and then you will organically level up in the process. That's what we did. And once I got towards the, you know, the gear score that I wanted to be, I was already level 50. That being said, if you're trying to level a new character, what you can do is go over to the Helicarrier, and to begin with, I would jump into Harm Room Challenge 1, and you can change the difficulty down to Challenge 1 because it is not going to impact your XP for the purposes of leveling up. You can do this on the easiest difficulty and run that back to back. Doing the Harm Challenge 1 will typically give you 1-2 to two levels per run, and you can do that for quite a while. Do keep in mind that as you get higher geared, as you get better, then the enemies that you fight, like specifically, will give you more XP. So as you get more proficient, as you get better geared, then you can jump all the way over to, say, Harm Room Challenge 5, and then run the first couple of rooms, because it's got some pretty tough enemies, and that in itself will give you a big chunk of XP. But if you're picking a character right from the beginning, then just simply jump over to Harm Challenge 1, run that through, run that repeat, and that is a pretty fast way to level. But again, honestly, I don't feel like you need to just level in isolation. I think you should just focus on gearing and then level at the same time. The only final tip, and this is one thing that I personally didn't get a chance to experience throughout the game, but there are sometimes ISOs that will drop or gear pieces that will drop with XP boost skills on them or XP boost stats. I had that during the beta, but I was super unlucky. I didn't get a single one of those during the game. But if you do happen to get an ISO that has increased XP gain from all sources, throwing that on will of course help you in the process. But for the time being, that's pretty much it. That's a guide on how to get to 150 gear score, the max, and of course some tips on leveling too. Hope you guys found that helpful. If you did, then again, a like would be super appreciated, and be sure to stick around for plenty more. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys wanna chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.